Do you want to rip up the packaging? Do you want to rip it up? Go ahead. <laughs> He's so good. He won't do it unless I tell him that he can. You have something on your face, dude. It's just... <laughs> Okay, so this week is going to be a little bit off-brand in terms of like how I'm editing and recording and filming all this and that's because my imports arrived pretty late and I don't even have them yet and it's getting close to like 8 o'clock or 7.30 or something. So I just finished filming last week's video so I do need to get this cleaned up first and I need to empty out this EXO because that's where I'm going to be acclimating. Yeah, it's gonna be a late night recording. I'm gonna try and do it all in here since it's like already dark outside in the living room. And then, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll unwrap with you guys and just kind of show you like how it arrives and um, like the condition it comes in sometimes. I mean, uh, fingers crossed. Everything looks good, but you know, it's always a hit or miss and it is still pretty cool here in Canada. So sometimes you get a little bit of cold damage, but I think, I think everything is good. I'm back and I have a huge bag of imports here. So I'm just gonna start opening them, I guess. I think this is gonna be the best lighting. It's not ideal in terms of comfort for me, but that's okay. Um, I'm just like, yeah, I'm stripping. This is very exciting. Nerve-wracking, but exciting. So the first one that we have is a Philodendron Gloriosum. Oh my gosh. It is so beautiful. Like, look at that venation smallest leaf next one and i think that this is actually round form dark form or round form it's not white veins i have white veins and it's different i'm not gonna unwrap the roots just yet i'm just gonna get them out of the bags we have another philodendron gloriosum what are you serious this is stunning. I'm like, I'm actually speechless because I've been wanting this form for so long. Wow. All of the Gloriosums. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Okay. Everything is going good so far. Uh, oh no, I'm gonna save this one for last. This is a, wait. Oh, this one is my friend's. Okay, well, I'm just gonna open it anyway. This is my friend's, it's a philodendron. Manger tents, and these are just like, these have to be one of my favorite philodendrons of all time. Feels a little soggy, but I think it's okay. Oh, wow. So this is what it looks like. And these ones just have like cute red bumpy petioles. Is it focused? Can't tell. And these new leaves are unlike anything else. I'm actually kind of surprised that this new growth is so green because usually it's like bubblegum pink, like really, really pink. So yeah, that's kind of confusing, but this is a, a Ninger Tense and um, yeah, these are great. Oh, I told my friend I sent a photo to her. Whoa, <laughs> you didn't see that, Nessa. <laughs> What the heck is this? It's so big. That's what she said. She said they said, um, Philodendron Rosio Catafilum. I don't think that name is right anymore. I think it's, or maybe this is the right name, but it's also called Philodendron Montanum. 
I could be wrong. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Whoa, this thing is crazy. Got one yellow leaf. Not bad. Well, actually, two yellow leaves. Looks like this one unfurled inside of the box. Um, but yeah, not bad. It's pretty cute. I like the shape of it. So this is what the leaves look like. Um, it feels really like matte to the touch. And what does it resemble? What does it remind me of? It kind of reminds me of a, am I thinking of a philodendron Ernestii? I don't know, but look at that leaf. That's beautiful. Um, this is my friend. This is a philodendron Ligurians. And she said this was gonna be rotten. Nessa, you watching? <gasps> wow. Oh my. Oh, floppy. So this is a philodendron Luxurians. Very similar to the El Choco Red, but it's got much more like striking venation. It like bleeds into the front, um, the front of the leaf blade. And yeah, it looks it looks pretty banged up. Um, but I think it's gonna be fine. <laughs> it's a little rough. These really don't ship well. Um, but it's in much better condition than what I've seen. Usually I've seen these just like turn into spinach. Super pretty. And I'll give you guys a better look at some of these when I start unpacking the roots. I just wanna get them out of the bag. This is what I was most excited about. Philodendron Patriciae. This can either be a massive disappointment or a massive surprise. Okay, I do see some yellow. Oh, I'm really, really nervous about this one. Okay. Oh, this one has a lot of leaves. Not the best packaging I've seen. Um, off the bat, I'm going to tell you that I thought maybe there was like a fungal thing going on because normally you'd see like the brown with the yellow halo around it, but I, I actually think that it, it's from being bent because it's yellow where it's like all cracked and folded. But yeah, this is it. This one actually has more prominent venation as it gets more mature. This is quite young still, but it shipped really well. Um, it's a good size, so yeah, I'm happy with it. So now the, now the nerve wracking part really comes. It's the unwrapping of the roots. So I'm gonna start with the Philodendron Patriciae. What's my guess? I think it's going to be completely rootless. And if there are any roots, they're gonna be completely dead. Honest reviews. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I'm not super, super duper in love with this. I'm much more a fan of the Philodendron Hedocraspidon, which I hope to own in the near future. But the Patriciae's, Patriciae's do get much, um, more delicious as they age, as I mentioned. Okay. Just taking a look at this. This is the smallest stem. So these roots are all, they're all crud. They're all gonna go. So I'm actually, I think I'm just gonna start over and I'm going to chop off the ones that look really, really bad and yeah, totally reroute this. So, all right. That was expected though. Uh, let's do Philodendron Ninger Tents next. Yikes. 
Oh, that's mushy. Yeah, that's super soft. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna peel this. I'm sorry, Nessa, but it's like, it's rotten and it just like is so soft. So I'm gonna take it off. I don't want it to rot anymore and get on the healthy petioles. This, this has to be completely rerooted. They're just falling off now, so. Yep. Normal, that's, I mean, honestly, when you import pretty much, um, I, I want to say like 95% of them have to be completely rerouted anyway. I'm sorry if I'm like not sounding very enthused. I really am. I feel like I say this in every video now. I'm very tired. Um, I don't think I'm gonna uh, try and attempt to film two YouTube videos in one day ever again. Especially not ones that require a lot of labor. Yikes. Yeah, we don't like that. That's all gotta go. Um, but at least the stem is good. And everything, everything looks seemingly healthy. I actually really love these leaves a lot. Philodendron luxuriance. So here's a little learning lesson. This is the original chunk that this whole plant grew from. This one right here. And you'll see that the new growth kind of comes out, comes out sideways. And it came from one of the auxiliary nodes. And you can see the top was chopped off here. So this is new growth. All of these little lines that you see right here these were all leaves before. So, so yeah, this has grown quite a bit before um, it got to this size. And even though, like this does not look great, this stem, it's not mushy, but I'm not really liking the color. It's a little bit soft on top. So I'm not gonna do it because this is not mine. I'm sure my friend is just gonna chop it right here and just separate this chunk from the new growth so that any like thing that anything that is like gross that's happening in here it's not gonna kind of transfer into the stem but I'm gonna let her do that you might hear Pudge in the background he's locked in the bedroom with my husband because he's gonna be trying to sniff everything not really expecting much with this I'm just hoping the rhizome is nice and healthy and it is and there's like a new leaf on the way so not the worst I, I i see maybe one root or two that might be salvageable but again i'm just gonna completely reroute this from scratch and um but yeah the important part is that the the stem is healthy and it's not squishy or mushy. I cannot believe this is in my possession. It is so beautiful. Like I, yeah, I just, I don't really have much else to say. Let's get this open. And actually these, um, these are quite firm. I've had some imports where the leaves were just so like beyond floppy. I was even scared to look at it. Oh, that's the smallest little caterpillar I've ever seen. Wait, what's happened? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. <gasps> no! No! Okay, so that's what's happening. It's not gonna grow. <laughs> that completely snapped off in transit. So, yep, this new guy never, um, never got a chance comes with the territory you know it's okay because we've got a caterpillar here small it is it as it is <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is 
I'm actually just gonna, I'm gonna leave all the roots as is for tonight. Um, just because I don't want to do any more, I don't want to do anything to stress out the plants even more. So I just want to get it into a pretty much a container of water just to rehydrate them. And then I'm gonna stick them in my EXO. Um, I'm gonna pop in tomorrow and I'll kind of show you my full acclimation process. But for today, I just, yeah, I need to go to bed. I'm so, so tired. But yeah, everything looks pretty good for the most part. I'm really happy. I don't even know why I bother cleaning up, to be honest. I should just leave it messy. Ow! <laughs> it looks very pitiful, but I completely cleared out the EXO of all my current plants. I did very, very quickly um, do a pest inspection, but I want to give it a closer look tomorrow in better light just because uh, I've had things like grubs and thrips and I think he even had like spider mite or no it was scale the last import so I just want to make sure that these guys are free of any pests I'm going to clean them off tomorrow like I said I don't want to stress it out even more I just wanted to get it in water let it chill out and then tomorrow we will um kind of get get into it and just make sure that there's nothing funky going on i'll clean up the roots and then yeah i'll just show you kind of how i start the acclimation process i need to figure out where all of these guys are going um but yeah i'm gonna save that for tomorrow me i'm not too worried about it's it's pretty warm in here um yeah whatever good night <laughs> okay so it's the next day um this is pretty normal to see more yellowing typically your plants are gonna look the best they're gonna look usually right out of the box um so i'm gonna take i'm gonna take everything out and just kind of do an inspection and then i'm gonna get this like whole thing rigged for higher humidity but yeah this guy is starting to go that's too bad. Um, all right, well, it could be worse. Okay, so we are at the sink, and the only step that I skipped um, in this video would have been the soak, like the 20 minute soak on the first day. But the reason I chose to not do that was because um, the leaves are actually really firm already, but if they were looking anything like the luxurians, those would have been, um, Put into water almost right out of the packaging so now what i want to do is just get these leaves cleaned off um and just you know just to make sure there's no like pests or just you know just dirt and yesterday i found two spiders which i put into my exoterra and hopefully they keep bad pests away um but yeah, I'm just gonna get this first cleaned off with water and then I'm gonna be using a really mild um, Dr. Bronner soap. This is the unscented one. You can also use peppermint if you like that. Uh, that's also good for pests, but I like to go with unscented just because I feel like it's like less abrasive or whatever. This gloriosum is starting to yellow, um, and yeah, that's just that's just part of it. I'm just hoping that these leaves hang in there. This one is starting to yellow as well. So if you've never imported before, just keep in mind that um, a lot of the times your plant is going to look totally different than when you first received it, whether it be just like the leaves yellowing or um, leaves just completely falling off or turning into mush that's just sort of um, 
part of the, comes with the territory, I guess. This patty isn't doing too bad. I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in the way it was shipped. Um, just because these leaves could have been protected much better, but they basically were just put into plastic, stuffed with like ripped paper, and you can see all of this yellowing is just from the leaf being bent, and it could have totally been avoided. And it's not like I didn't pay a decent amount for this, so I just, yeah, I would have expected that it shipped better, and yeah, I feel like. I feel like it's a hit or miss really with um, people who are exporting plants. If they're exporting at a high volume like Equigenera is, um, they're not going to put that much like I feel like time into ship uh, the actual packaging process. Whereas like smaller sellers, um, they really, really put the time and effort into making sure each like each leaf is um, protected and there's no bending or creasing in transit. Um, something that I kind of want to talk about just a little bit is, is, ac is finding suppliers. And I'm not going to go into that because I don't personally do it myself. I usually just piggyback with friends that are importing. Um, but I did import a little bit in the beginning of 2019, or maybe it was the end of 2018. And I was looking for specifically a large leaf melanochrysum. And I found a supplier in, I think it was Indonesia or, yeah, I think it was Indonesia that had one and it was like massive, like I'm talking huge. like. And as much as I wanted it, because I could afford it at the time, it was much cheaper than it is now. Um, I asked like, what were the growing conditions? Like it was so big, like where had it been grown? And is it being chopped from like a mother plant? Like what's the deal? And he couldn't give me any answers. And like, he wouldn't give me any answers. And in all of the like photos that he sent me, he wasn't in like a greenhouse like they typically are. He was literally just like in a forest or like in a jungle. And I was just like, okay, this seems sketchy. So I had very high, um, what's the word? I had high suspicion that this plant was poached from the wild because of the massive size of it. The fact that the leaves were not like very, um, the leaves had a lot of cosmetic damage on it as it would when it's just kind of unprotected and not grown in the greenhouse. So I don't know all the signs to look for to ensure that you're not supporting sellers that are poaching from the wild because that is a massive problem in this hobby. Um, so I would say, you know, like if you are going to be reaching out to sellers or whatever, like ask questions and if they don't want to answer your questions, then they don't, they don't deserve your money, you know? Um, so yeah, just, just be, just be aware of that. I just thought I, I would touch on that a little bit just because, you know, if I'm talking about importing, like find reputable sellers, like big places like Equigenera who are, I feel like they're under the microscope. And we've actually asked them in the past, um, or they've been asked, you know, how are they producing these plants? And um, people wanted to make sure because of how popular they are, people wanted to make sure that they weren't poaching. And um, yeah, you can see they grow a lot of things from seedlings. A lot of the times things will sell out really fast because they only have like a limited amount of plants available for that because they can only grow so fast. But yeah, I mean, obviously if you have any information about, like if you suspect that a seller is poaching, I feel like that information should be shared because as much as, you know, I want a big beautiful plant just like the next person I also don't want to own a plant that was poached from the wild because that would just yeah that's no no that's just wrong okay and I'm done talking about that
The next thing I'm gonna be doing is just cutting off roots that are no longer viable, that I know are no longer viable. Like if they're completely just dead like this. Um, that does nothing for the plant. Um, and when you have it in whatever substrate you're gonna keep it in, this can actually turn to mush and create things like rot. And yeah, you just wanna like clean it up as much as possible. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna clean this up. So I know not a lot of people do this, um, but I I always pull off these secondary, um, come on, these secondary roots just because the chances of them actually sort of being alive or doing anything that's gonna contribute to the health of your plant and the growth of your plant is kind of low, just because a lot of them die in transit so I just remove them and I like to just reroot and start from uh, scratch if I have a root like this that I feel like is healthy enough to push out new um, new roots so yeah I'm just going to clean up all these secondary ones basically So this is what I'm left with. I probably could cut off a little bit more, but I think this is fine for now. Um, I'm gonna see if any of these are still alive. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes like a root will look really, really bad and then it'll surprise you and 
start pushing out new roots. So I try and keep the ones that still look thick and like somewhat plump um, that don't have any like bends in it and um, kind of breaks, if that makes sense. And hopefully this guy gives me some new roots soon. I am um, pretty confident. I, I like, I don't know, philodendrons, they just, they're just really good to you. And uh, as far as rooting goes, I can't think of one philodendron that like really, really gave me um, trouble trying to root it. It's really just monsteras that like I struggle with. It looks a lot better and I'm feeling, I'm feeling good about this plant. I think it's gonna be just fine. Okay, I want to show you this. So I typically wouldn't have cut off a root that is this like big and firm. God, sorry, the sun is moving. But if you look up at the base of the stem, I can't see anything. Can you see? Okay, whatever. So if you look at the base of the stem, um, or not the base of the stem, the base of the root, you can see that it's actually already De detached like that thick tissue has detached from the stem and it looks like it had like rotted a little bit so I am just gonna cut that off because um, that's not gonna do anything anymore unfortunately
This thing hurt so freaking bad. Do you see that? I pinched my finger in the tripod and it hurts. Like it's just constantly throbbing. It's like I want to put a band-aid on it, but what the heck would a band-aid do? It's not bleeding, it's just, it's inside. Anyway, I just wanted to feel better. I just wanted to tell somebody because my mom's not here to comfort me. That's all. Okay, so a week has gone by since I imported these and I actually am moving some things around in the plant room and you will find out why next week unless you follow me on Instagram but um, yeah I don't have a light on top of my plant room table anymore so the lighting is going to be a little bit weird but um, I thought I would do an update on how these guys are doing. I no longer have two of the plants that I unboxed because they are now with its actual owner um, but I do have most of them. So I'm going to start with this Philodendron Gloriosum. Okay, so this one sort of got these like weird sort of stretch marks on them and it didn't look like that when I first got it, but yeah, they just appeared out of nowhere and I'm not sure why. The other leaves are okay besides this one that is currently on its way out, but it does have this like decent sized leaf coming in. And overall, I would say it's doing really well. Um, it didn't have this one to begin with, but now the petiole is super, super soft, so I'm just gonna rip it off. And I'm taking a look at roots. I'm not seeing any brand new roots yet. Um, Old roots are not mushy, which is good. Oh, here. 
These are acclimated roots. So this is um, this is a good sign. This sheath is a little bit soft, but yeah. And it's kind of funny because this is a crawler, but <laughs> the stem is actually going upward. So if I planted it this way, now it's, yeah, it's kind of a weird. So I think eventually maybe I will try and cut it. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's just an observation. So this guy is doing okay. I'm pretty happy with um, the way it's going so far. And then I've got another Gloriosum here. And this one is doing relatively well. Um, one of the leaves is going out, unfortunately. Well, it's already out, but I'm waiting till it's like soft enough to just kind of fall off on its own. Um, looking at roots. I'm not seeing any brand new roots like the other one. But I do see sort of like the beginnings of, I forgot what the name of these are called. These little like dots. Does anyone know? I mean, I suppose I'll just look it up later and plug it in. But yeah, no roots on this one yet. But overall, still doing really well. And I think... I think this is gonna poke something out pretty soon. This is the Philodendron Rosio Cataphyllum. Cataphyllum, I think I'm saying that right. Yeah, this one is just a champ. It's like not fussing at all. None of the, well, one of the leaves have already completely yellowed and I pulled it off. But otherwise, these ones are just like, yeah, they're great. I'm, I think that I can actually move this one out of an EXO pretty soon. Cause I do want it to live on my shelf um no roots on it yet but you can see those little those little um i think i forgot what the name is called but yeah that's a good sign that's a great sign don't take those off i think this is the beginning of a new root right there so it's coming along um i'm going to chop this one off because it's completely dried it was sticking outside of the vase overall not mad at this at all it's doing really well and last but not least, we have the Philodendron Patriciae. And all of these brown spots are where it was um, folded in the box. And yeah, I was not really impressed by the packaging of this considering the price point it was at, especially. Um, but you know, their plants still grow, whatever. This one is doing a lot better than I would say the other ones in terms of rooting. This is really, really fast. And now that it's got these two poking out, I'm gonna give it maybe like another two or three days and then I'm gonna put it straight into moss because I don't want too long of water roots. I want to get some nice moss roots because the goal will be to eventually move it to soil. So yeah, that's the update on the last um, import batch, but I wanted to show you the import that I got before this one because I think it's been like a month now so I kind of want to just check in on the roots see how everything is doing and I think I kept some import roots on there so I just kind of want to show you how it changes and hopefully I can get a good example but the reason why I cut off roots um, sometimes when they are imported okay so I have a few plants from my last import order and I think it's been like a month or possibly even longer. Um, when I first got some of these plants, they were either rootless or they had those import roots like I just showed you. So they're just kind of sad looking. Um, very rarely will you get an import order and just have like nice, healthy, like ready to go roots. Like you, you usually have to start over. I can already tell because I use clear pots that they're doing really well, but um, some of them are starting to come out of the bottom. And what you're hearing is perlite and probably a bit of LECA because I've been mixing my substrates. If you watched my um, sphagnum moss video and my propagation video, this guy is looking really good. Anthuriums are, they are amazing. I used to be really intimidated of anthuriums. I never 
really wanted to own one because I felt like they were going to be too hard to care for and it was just going to be too heartbreaking of a experience but honestly I find them to actually be sometimes easier than um, easier than philodendrons and like other types of plants but anyway yeah I, I just find that anthuriums are pretty vigorous rooters um, shortly after import it's like once you can just get them nice and settled they don't really make you work too hard for it so I'm not gonna pull off everything because I am going to still keep it in moss and I don't plan to move any of these plants to soil anytime soon I love to I love growing anthuriums in moss for like long term it's great and I don't really see the point in moving it to soil at this point because there's no new growth. It's like it hasn't woken up yet. It was obviously just working on root production after import, which is totally fine. And yeah, I'm happy with this. I think it's good that I got it out of that pot because I do want to sort of shift around these roots so that they're not poking out of the bottom anymore. But let me give you a closer look. So just by looking at it, I can tell that these, let me see. I think that it already had all of these main sort of primary roots, like these four. They look a little older. Um, they, they don't look like they're br like brand new. So yeah, I think that these four is what it came with. I wish I documented it when I first got it in here, but um, yeah, these these new roots down here has been uh, grown in my care. It kept all of the leaves still. It looks like this one's sort of starting to go out. And now that the root system is, I would say, pretty decent, I think that it's going to wake up and um, give me a leaf soon especially with this leaf going out and it being, you know, relatively stable. So that's just my prediction. I'm gonna get it back into this pot. I'm just getting some myco on these roots before I pop it back into this pot. And I'm gonna say this until I make my own video on it, but if you wanna learn about myco, go to Alice's Instagram and she's got a highlight on it. And she talks a little bit about how it works and how she uses it. And I basically just do exactly what she does, so it wouldn't be any different. And then once I feel confident in my um, sort of like knowledge on Myco and how it works, and maybe get some like documented tests and like experiments done on film that I can show you, I think I'll make that video, but that's not gonna be for a while. I've only been using it for, I wanna say it's been like a month and a half, maybe two months now. So yeah, this guy's doing good. I'm just gonna plop it back in there and just let him be. Next up we have an Anthurium Forgetii and this one has also been a champ, hasn't yellowed, hasn't dried up at all, hasn't changed a single bit since I imported it. And I'll be able to tell the condition that it was in when I put it in here once I can get this unwrapped. Once you start to kind of understand um, like the root systems of certain plants, you'll be able to kind of tell a lot about what that plant went through or what you did with that plant originally. <sighs> just another day. Okay, so off the bat, just by looking at this, I can tell you that I left some import roots that I felt uh, were viable enough to give me something and it looks like I was right for a few of them. Um, so this one, this one looks like a brand new root grown in my care. This was, this didn't come with the plant when I imported it. These however did come with the plant um, and it looks like maybe two or three of them can be pulled off now. This one right here doesn't look wonderful, but you'll see right there, 
it's got that brand new root poking out, so I'm going to leave it. But I am going to clean this up just a little bit. Um, but overall, it's doing really well. I would like to get more roots on this separate stem before I even think about cutting it maybe because I would like to make more plants but I don't do it unless I feel like the plant is ready and I don't feel like this plant is ready. So I'm gonna leave it but anyway, that's just like a disclaimer. If you import a plant, if you import a plant and this stem just like looks gross, it's mushy, but this new growth is fine, I would just I would just separate it. And that's just my opinion. A lot of the times these chunks, they're kind of just like a bonus. Like honestly, these sellers don't even have to give you this. And this is just extra because if it's healthy, I can separate it. And there's plenty of auxiliary points on this um, stem that I can make new plants. If it does come back and it's like, or if it arrives and it's mushy, I feel like it's not really fair to like, you know, rag on the seller if like the actual growth itself is happy. Um, just keep in mind that importing comes with risk and if a seller packaged something in a way that was responsible and, um, you know, they put time and care into it, but maybe it got delayed a little bit at customs or, um, you know, it's just, it's not in perfect condition. That's just part of it. Like you can't expect to import a plant from across the world and uh, expect it to be in like Instagram worthy condition. You're gonna have to put in the work to get it looking that way. So if you're looking for, you know, a nice big beautiful plant right out of the box, you probably just wanna buy from a local seller or a local plant shop and let them do the acclimating and the growing for you. And that's just real because it's not cheap. Like, it used to be cheap to import. Back when I was importing in like 2000, what was it, 2018 or something, or 2017, you know, queen, you can get a queen, like a good sized queen for like 25 bucks, like 30 bucks, and now it's like the same suppliers charging, you know, like 500 for it or whatever. So yeah, it's not cheap, it's not, I don't think it's easy to acclimate, it does take, does take a lot of time and energy and effort. Um, a lot of the times people who import lose money on you know dead plants. You don't always get refunds, you don't always get replacement. It's just kind of the the risk that comes with importing. So just keep that in mind if you are thinking about importing yourself. And just kind of be prepared to put in the work because it's not like you can just bring these home and then just stick it in soil and stick it on a shelf usually okay wow why am i talking so much so yeah this looks good i'm gonna just get it back into moss and i'm gonna put some fresh mica on it as well That's the reason why I cleaned up the roots a little bit. I wanted the myco to be able to make direct contact. Otherwise, I would just leave it. All right, so forgetty eyes looking good. I'm really happy about this one. Just, I think I've mentioned, I mentioned it in my Ethereum video, but forgetty eyes just, they have to be one of my favorites. Like if I had an opportunity to hoard these, I would, trust me. Next we have this kind of like weird Dresselrae hybrid. And this one didn't arrive to me in the best condition. Um, the leaves actually are yellowing a bit more now in my care. This one looks like it's on the way out, but we do have a new leaf on the way here. This was a brand new leaf when I imported it and it died, so. I'm, gl I'm glad to see some new growth on it because I really didn't think I would um, see any growth for a while since that, you know, leaf was so brand new. It's looking good already. I can tell it's happy in here. Um, to be honest, this root system looks a bit more extensive than I thought, and since it's got a new leaf on the way, I'm, I'm not going to touch it too much. 
Um, what do I want to do? I think I want to pack a little bit more moss around it though, because it's starting to come out of the pot. So what I'm going to do is basically just add a little bit more moss down at the bottom. And then I'm just going to plop it right back in. Actually, I'm going to sprinkle some myco. Um, I don't really want to size up the pot, but I want to get some moss around these roots on the outside, so I think I am going to loosen it just a little bit. Not too much, just so I can kind of fit it in this pot with ease. And then that way I can pack around it. Not the greatest angle, but I feel like you can get an idea of what I'm doing. I can hear my camera like doing the focusing sound. I still need to get a mic. I'm looking for a good one. I, I can't make up my mind on one, but once I get one, you'll be able to stop hearing that um focusing sound, but one day. <laughs> and I am gonna pack around the stem here because I can see some roots starting to poke out and I would love to get those rooted as well. So I'm gonna go around it as high as I can. And just tuck it in. Okay, this guy's doing good. Not too shabby. Last, or second to last one. This one was my favorite one from the import. This is a, what they call a king of spades, I think. doing well. I think this one already had some good roots on it when I first got it. Let's take a look. The great thing about Anthurium roots are that they are just delicious. <laughs> the bad part is they're very, very delicate and one false move and it will snap right off. So you gotta be super gentle. Um, okay, these green roots in there and all of these smaller ones, that was already on the plant when I received it. These are brand new though, like this one, can you see it? This one is brand new, ah. This one's brand new, this one's brand new, ah, uh, this one's brand new. It's actually have, it actually has a lot of new roots on it, but all of these down here are import roots and truth be told, they look really good for import roots. So it's a good call to keep those on. Um, even some of these hairline ones, or not hairline, <laughs> these like secondary smaller roots, they actually look pretty decent as well. So I'm not gonna be doing any cleanup in here. I'm actually just going to leave it like this and get it repotted. This focusing is just not, no, let's not do that. Okay, let me get it back in. Um, this one is on its way out and actually I'm just gonna pluck it off so that I don't have to touch it um, once it's repotted. I love to see sort of the size difference between the first leaf and the last leaf. Like look how cute that is. This is the little guy that started it all. And it's just crazy to see like how big they um, get in such a short time. So this is the leaf that came after it Pretty decent size up to be honest. I don't see any leaves that were broken off. So I am under the oh actually 
actually, okay, so it's this leaf first. This is the one that came after this one. And then it was this one, which was actually a little bit smaller. And then it went from that to this. This one is, this one is too small. I gotta size it up to a six incher. Okay, so this is my Acclimation XO. It's nothing fancy. Uh, this is a 36 tall, 18 wide, 18 depth. Um, humidity fluctuates anywhere between 60 to 80%, just depending on like how much I'm misting or adding water. Um, but usually it's gonna stay around 60, which I find to be pretty fine for new imports, unless you import something super finicky, like um, what's something that's really Hard to acclimate varicosums. I find varicosums to be one of the most challenging plants to import. And then um, that luxuriance that I got in this last import order, that one um, that one perked right up in a bin, but it did not like being in here. So you kind of just have to play it by ear and just kind of let the leaves tell you what it needs. But yeah, these ones were just so great from the start that I was like, I, I didn't really feel the need to like bin it bin it meaning like putting it in a you know a, a container with like a hundred percent humidity basically so yeah nothing else much to say about that these light panels are just like 20 watt domia light panels i don't have a heat mat in here or anything it's just yeah it just lives so that's that i forgot to show you one of the imports and this is an Ethereum pendens and although it looks like it would be like a really hardy, like sort of easy to acclimate plant, I have not had luck with this. These stems just like to turn to mush basically overnight. But I got some nice roots on this one, which is further than I got with the last time I tried to import it. So that's a good sign. And also a new leaf, also a great sign. So I'm actually just gonna leave it in here because I don't want to mess with it too much. I'm not feeling very confident in my abilities to acclimate these things. So I'm just gonna leave it, just pretend it's not there. And uh, it's crispy in here, so I need to actually get this sprayed down because it's kind of dry. It's been, it's been a long few days. Okay, one last thing, I swear. This is a philodendron polymaniae. We're looking at this one right in the center. Uh, that one was also a new import. I don't want to go too much into that one because I want to actually do like a proper update video on it since I featured it pretty heavily in my propagation video. Sorry if my hand is shaky, I haven't eaten lunch yet. But I took a good chunk off of that plant and I felt like I wanted to at least show you this because it's doing something. I don't know if you guys remember what it looked like when I first sort of <laughs> hacked this up, but I told you it was gonna turn green again. They just like wake back up and got some roots. Some nice decent roots actually. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Got one, two, three roots poking out. Um, auxiliary growth points sort of look like they calloused up but I think once these um, roots start going, they'll start activating. That one still looks nice and healthy, even though it's kind of cut in two. But yeah, if you guys haven't um, experimented with sort of cleaning up your chunks, cleaning up roots and stuff like that, it's not only very satisfying, 
but I just find that my propagations do so much better when you can kind of just give them a fresh start. So give that a try. Where'd your paws go? <laughs> They're missing. Your little paws. I'm sorry to wake you from your nap, but do you want to say bye to everybody? Want to say see you later? And we hope you enjoyed this video and to give it a thumbs up so that it counters all the people who keep thumbsing down our video. Do you have anything you'd like to say to everyone? I'll give you a treat if you give them a high five. Okay, high five. <laughs> Not quite. Can we try again? One more time. High five. High five. Wait, 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 wait. Tell everyone that you were just, you were just pretending. Okay, we're gonna try one more time. Third time's a charm, even though I think that was the fourth time. One high five, that's all I want. High five. Yay, bye.